Hi guys, I'm Ryan, and in this video, we're going to be doing geometric sequences and series, okay? So, if you're in any of the math courses, if you're in any of the IB math courses, you're going to need to know this, okay? Um, before learning about the geometric sequences, so I'm going to assume you already did the arithmetic sequences and series, um, so I'm going to use some concepts from that video. If you guys haven't watched it yet, go watch the 1.2 arith arithmetic sequences and series video. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So a geometric sequence is very similar to an arithmetic sequence in the sense that it's a group of numbers that are related. However, for geometric sequence, it's related by multiplication. Okay, in arithmetic sequence, the numbers are related by addition or subtraction, right? But in geometric sequence, it's only related by multiplication. Okay, and similarly to, arith similar to arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences, the numbers are in order and what what, the, what does that mean? It means that there's a specific number stored in a specific position. Okay, so to give you an example, let's say I have a, se a geometric sequence named U. Okay, its name is U. Okay, so the numbers in this U in this geometric sequence named U is two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Okay, so very easily we can see that the numbers are related by times two multiplication of two so times two every single time okay and then we call this the common ratio okay in arithmetic sequence the gap we call it common difference right so now in geometric sequence we call the gap common ratio okay because multiplication by two and then similarly to arithmetic sequences we have a position okay so the value number two the value of two is stored in position number one the value of four is stored in position two the value of eight is stored in position three and so on and so forth remember the order matters right the numbers are in order so that's why we have different positions okay and then another example would be i'm giving the name of g okay i'm calling this sequence g okay the name of this geometric sequence is g now so the numbers in this geometric sequence g is 9 3 1 over 3 1 over 9 1 over 27 and so on and so forth okay as we can see this is a geometric sequence because the numbers are related by a multiplication of 1 over 3 okay now you can say hey can i think of this as dividing by 3 dividing by 3 dividing by 3 yes it's possible however to keep everything simple we just want to think of it as multiplication okay so we're multiplying by 1 over 3 multiply by 1 over 3 multiply by 1 over 3 so again the common ratio will be 1 over 3 and then there's also positions right so the value of 9 is stored in position 1 value of 3 is stored in position 2 1 over 3 is stored in position 3 and so on and so forth okay so now again for geometric sequence the only questions they can ask you is given a specific position what is the value stored so this is the value stored in position n right and this is the value stored in position 1 this is a common ratio and this is your position number Okay, so some questions they can ask you is given, let's say, position 1, what is the value stored in position 2? Then you would just use this formula here. And then they could also be like, um, given the value stored is 16, what is the position, right? So they would need to find position 4, and then you would use this formula as well. Okay, so let's try a concrete example here. Okay, so they're telling me a second, the second term of a geometric sequence is 6. Okay, so let's just name, so I'm usually I start with giving the geometric sequence a name. Let's say I want to call it geometric sequence G. Okay, I know that in the position number 2, the second term, right? So that means position number 2, I have a value stored of 6. Okay, and in the fifth term, in the fifth term, I have a, pos I have a value of 162. So let's write that down. G5 is equal to 162. Okay, so how would we do this question? Okay, um, what we want to find the 10th term, right? So we want to find G10 is equals to what, right? We want to find that. Okay, so we want to use the formula, right? So we want G10 is equals to G1, right? Times R to the power of 10 minus 1. Okay, so simplifying this is G1 is equal to uh, G10 is equal to G1 times R to the power of 9. Okay, so in other words, we, we know what G10 is and we can figure out what is G1 and R. Okay, but now the question is how can we find R? Well, very simple. We know that in position 2, we have a 6, and position 5, we have 1, 6, 2, right? So that means we have position 1 is something here. So let's call it position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? Right now, we have something here we don't know. Position six, position 2 is 6. We don't know this. We don't know this. And then position 5 is 162. So we let's write that down here. Now, because the question told us is a geometric sequence, we know that this must be related by a multiplication, right? So it must be times r and then times r times r. Okay. So in other words, what we what do we know? We know that six times r times r times r is equals to one hundred and sixty-two. Okay. So that means r cubed is equals to one sixty-two over six. So if we put that in our calculator, 
one six two over six is equal to twenty seven. So meaning the cube root so r cube is equal to twenty seven. That means r must be equal to three. Okay, very simple. So with that knowledge, that means this is going to be a times three times three times three every single time. Okay, so by common logic, just think about it. What is going to be in position number one? It means something times three is six, right? So this must be equals to, we know this is two because two times three will become six. Okay, so we figured out what is in G1. So G10, very simply, we just need to sub in the value stored in position one, which is two. Okay, R we know is three to the power of nine. Okay, so we'll put that in the calculator, two, three to the power of nine. That'll give us three nine three six six, right? Three nine three six six. Um, yes, three nine three six six. Three nine three six six. So that will be our answer, final answer. The value stored in position ten will be three nine three six six. Okay. Um, so moving on from geometric sequence, we're going to move on to geometric series. Again. Geometric series is exactly the same as geometric sequence. However, we're just adding up a certain number of numbers. Okay, just like arithmetic series, we're adding up a certain number of numbers from an arithmetic sequence. In geometric series, we're adding up a certain number of numbers from a geometric sequence. Okay, so so let's use uh, let's use this question as an example. And for summing up for geometric series, we're gonna have to use this formula here. Okay, so. Let's take a look at the question here as an example. The nth term un of a geometric sequence is given by un is equal to that. Okay, so we have a formula. Find the common ratio of r. Okay, so part a, what can we do? We can say, let's figure out u1. What is u1? Okay, u1 is equal to 3 times 5 to the power of 3. Right? So 5 to the power of 3 is 125. 125 times 3 is 4, 7, 5. Okay, 125 times 3. Just double check, 375. Okay, 375. So now we can find u2 is equal to 3 times 5 to the power of 4, right? Because now we need to sub in 2 into here. Okay, so we get 3 times 5 to the power of 4, which is 1875. Okay, so we know that what? We know that the value stored in position 1 is 375, and the value stored in position 2 is 1875. Okay, so what does that mean? We can write it like this, 1875, and then in position 3, we don't know what it is, so let's just put a dot, dot, dot. Okay, we know this is a geometric sequence because the question told us it's a geometric sequence. Okay, so in order to find the ratio, what do you do? We need to see what is this number here, right? So how do we find this r? Okay, very simply, we just need to... 1875 divided by 375, right? Okay, so that will give us 5. So we know r is equal to 1875 over 375, which is equal to 5, right? Yeah, 5. Okay, so that is the answer for part A. Okay, now part B. Hence, or otherwise, find Sn, the sum of the first n terms of the sequence. Okay, so we need to find Sn. We want to find a general formula to find out how um, to find out what is what is the sum of the first n terms, right? Okay, so let's look up at the formula that the IB gave us. Sn is equals to u1 r to the power of n minus one over r minus one, right? So it's right. So this one right here. Okay, so we just need to sub stuff in. Okay, what is our u1 in this case? Our u1 in this case is three seven five. Okay, and then r is what? R is five, right? So five n minus one over five minus one. So simplify that. It's three seven five five to the power of n minus one over four. Okay. Notice how in the final answer here we have an n. Okay, that's completely normal because we want to find the value stored. I mean, not the value store. We're trying to find the sum of the first n terms, right? So maybe n is 5. If n is 5, then it means find the sum of the first 5 terms. If n is 4, maybe then you need to find the sum of the first 4 terms, right? So that's why it's completely normal to have n here because we need sub in number. If this is, let's say, 4, then this will be 4, okay? If this is 5, then this will be 5, okay? And so that's it for geometric sequences and series. Um, hope you guys liked the video. If you guys did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to get updates on future videos.